Hey everyone, welcome to Pipes, Tobacco, and Whiskey. So today Nathan and I are going to give you our impressions on something new to the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, came out uh, probably about a month ago. And this is GL Pieces Windjammer. Now Windjammer is, uh, of course, blended by... Cornell and Deal, mm -hmm. manufactured by Cornell and Deal, yep. and uh, it contains um, Black Cavendish, uh, Burley, Perique, and Virginias. has a rum topping on it. Uh, they say it comes in, in a flake. But the way it came, it was more of a broken flake. Honestly. Yeah, I don't know if that's consistent in all the tins, yeah. but, but in our tin, it was definitely a broken, broken flake. Apart, yeah, yeah bro more of a broken flake. Comes in two-ounce tins. And uh, you can get it just about anywhere that sells GL Peace products. Uh, the strength on this is medium. The flavoring on it is mild. The taste is medium. And let's just jump right into this one and give you our impressions. By the way, this is my first smoke of this. Okay. This is So you've, you've smoked it a couple times, right? I have. I have. Uh, and I actually find it pretty pleasant. Uh, the rum topping doesn't seem too overpowering. But... Let's get into the tin note. So what did you think when we first got into it? Well, first, the first smell that jumps out at you is definitely the rum topping. That's me, mm -hmm. you know. I, and for a navy, navy blend, this to me has more rum topping than I've seen in a lot of other navy blends. We yeah. did... We did uh, Samuel Galliff's Navy, Navy Flake, Flake. Yeah, yeah. Navy Flake not too long ago. This definitely has more rum uh, scent yeah. than, than that one did. Yeah, that one had more of a tobacco forward scent with a little light accent of rum. This one, yeah, you get the full rum smell effect of it. You know, you get that woodsy earthy scents from all the different flavors. Yeah, there's definitely dark fruit in there. Oh, yeah. Some fig. Real raisin. Raisin. Yeah. yeah. Raisin smell. And I mean, I don't know how much they use, because I remember we went to that tobacco shop and that guy said he used an ounce of liquor for every, I think he said every two ounces of Tobacco. You're kidding me. No, <laughs> use the lot. Now that's that's overkill. What 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 was what was that blend? What what blend are you talking about? Oh, uh, the tobacco shop that we went to down yeah. in uh, Cedar Hill. Uh, just his home blends that he was using. Oh, I see. I see what you. No, I. It can't be for every two ounces. It's got to be for every jar. Are you sure? Uh. I don't know. He used a lot. I remember he oh, told me. He get drunk just smelling it. I don't know. Yeah, well, he dries. He, he 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 keeps it like that, and then he lays it out and lets it dry out, and then he redoes it. it he says it takes a month-long process. I'm not sure. But this one, you really, and that's why I was thinking, gosh, they used either a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of rum, or they just used a really high-quality rum to yeah. add that It does smell great. It. It's It's... Uh, that that rum topping hits me first. Um, dark chocolate kind of uh, not dark chocolate, dark fruit mm -hmm. kind of a a, a raisin uh, scent to it. I get some molasses in there. Yeah, a, a touch of spice. It's really rich. <laughs> really, really rich. And the other thing that I don't know is I have never tried anything with black Cavendish in it. That it, it literally said it is an unsweetened. Toasted black Cavendish. That's all it is. The type of black Cavendish they used in there. Never tried it, and I am pleasantly surprised mm. with the way it is. I also get a little hit of. I, I said chocolate earlier, and there's a yeah. little bit of chocolatiness in there. It's, it's a great, great tin note. Mm -hmm. Really good tin note. Very, very good tin note. Yeah. Uh, and I think. That's what assisted the broken flakeness of it is maybe there is so much moisture and so many different types of tobacco that are pressed together in it to make that flake that it just falls apart after they cut the flake into the lines. It's quite possible. possibly. It's possible. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, taste so far? Well, as I'm getting into it, uh, the Virginias are forward mm -hmm. for sure. 
um, you know, you get kind of that rich, sweet, um, all, all tad citrusy um, from from the Virginias, and it's I, I'm I'm getting some reds, some yeah. some ripe reds. Yeah, me in, too. In there, yeah. I know that there's brights in there. You can tell by yeah. looking at it. Just looking at it. There's brights in it, which probably is where, where, where the citrus tones are coming from. But, uh, man, the the sweetness that I enjoy from reds mm-hmm. are, are really what's come, what's shining in this one. Plus, I am getting a little bit of the rum that comes mm-hmm. through as well. Which is surprising because of how much that rum is... Up really hitting us on the tin note it doesn't seem to come through on this smoke that bad that's that's the thing that i'm enjoying most about this smoke is you smell it all the way through you only slightly taste it it doesn't overpower the rest of the flavors in this tobacco blend and i'm finding it very pleasant uh, I get some of the nutty earthiness from the Burleys. I was just saying and that. And the slight pepper from the Periques. I, it says on there it puts a generous amount of Periques. I mean, in the description, it says there's a generous amount of Periques in there. I don't think it is the most Perique-filled blend I've ever smoked. And I've smoked some bad ones. Well, this is an example. You know, I'm Perique kind of does some weird things when I when I smoke Periques it does some weird things to my palate and it either it's going to either hit me with a, a spice bomb or it's going to hit me with that dark fruit and this and I like the dark fruit mm-hmm. style of Perique that's what I get from yep. this one uh, you know it's almost like a stewed fruit yeah yeah like you know they kind of kind of the, those fruits that are are just meshed and melded together yeah you know? um it and actually do you taste any any of the cocoa in here a little of the cocoa and i'm sure that's coming from burley's it's either coming from the burley or the toasted sweetness that you get from the black cavendish maybe, maybe. because this is unsweetened black cavendish so i i i don't remember the full par- process on what they do to make black cavendish but I do know that. That might be a good episode. It, yeah, it's specified specific it that this black Cavendish that's in there is an unsweetened, unadulterated Cavendish. It's just been toasted and gone through what the bare necessities of, of making it a Cavendish is. That's what it is. I get a little figginess, mm-hmm. figginess in here. I get so it's creamy. It's got a creamy mouth feel. There's slight bitterness in there, Mm -hmm. uh, which kind of leans towards the spicy end of the Perique's earthy. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a pretty interesting little smoke. Yeah, yeah. Not typical of what I would think. I guess it's a navy blend. Yeah, I think that's how they market it, is a navy blend. It's not typical of what I would particularly say a navy blend is those tend to be a little more bright a little more forward and a little hot when it comes to smoking it and uh, this one smokes very like you said very creamy very smooth and you get those dark fruit flavors in there most of the time i smoke a navy flake i get those bright virginias those very tangy flavors this one i do not and it's a it's a pleasant surprise kind of makes me want to sit down when i smoke on not not a big long you know I'm yeah. gonna smoke this all day kind of smoke. Yeah, I definitely don't think this is an all day smoke. I don't think so either. It's because it, there's all it's pretty robust. Yeah, it, it's got it's a, a lot thick of, it's a thick smoke. Yeah, it's got a lot of flavor to it. A lot a lot of things. It's pretty complex. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the room note? Um, you know, I think how that that rum note kind of gives it a pleasant, uh, uh, touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, to it, but I think non-smokers probably would consider it tolerable. Yeah, I th- I think it's right in between that really pleasant and tolerable kind of uh, uh, realm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that in between where in where your smoker. This is gonna change of pace. 
if you're a non-smoker, you're going to be taught, you're going to be able to sit in the room while someone's smoking this. And I think it's the rum that makes it stand out the most. Yeah. That smell of the rum makes it where people kind of go, that's an interesting little smoke. What are you smoking there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you on that. What about the Nick hit? Uh, maybe, maybe a medium. Yeah. It's, it's stronger than some of the, some of the ones that we've done here. And it was the Nick hit, I think on this one is stronger than the one on Samuel Gallup. I think so too. I think, I, I don't know if it's because of the, the fullness of the smoke or the creaminess of it. Uh, but it does make me feel like I need to be relaxing, sitting down to smoke this. This isn't one of the ones where I can light my pipe and go do yard work. This yeah. is this is a sit down and smoke. I do have a, a question for you. You've, you've smoked this a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. um, have you tried it both ways with the, the, the folding stuff and rubbed out? I've, I've had to rub this one out every time because I can't seem to... Now, I, I have taken smaller flake chunks the way they are and just stuffed them in. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't come in a full... So kind of a kind of like a like a Wrigley's gum. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. come in a full slate basically, yeah. as as most flake tobaccos do. This one is definitely broken apart. Yeah, the, yeah. It, it, there's a they, lot there's, of pieces. Yeah, and there's some that are. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you can kind of see a little bit that that's what it looks like when it comes to. So it's really. Not in sheets. No, no. Of, sheets is a good way of saying yeah, it. Yeah, sheets of, of tobacco. More like uh, broken flake, like we said. So it's really difficult to fold and stuff that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I've always found that the easiest way to do it is just to to rub it out. And you get, you'll get some of those small little hints. And you can tell when you hit them while you're smoking it. Because it just seems to get thicker. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's just a little bit thicker of a smoke. Uh, but this one, particularly to me, with, with when it comes to the aspects of the nicotine hit, it's a little... I would agree with you on a medium. This is a little tougher than some of the other smokes that we've had. Especially being more Virginia Ford smoke. Tougher, uh, maybe bolder. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Tougher. Because it's, e it's easy to smoke. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But uh, bolder for sure, yeah. Well, what did you think about the moisture on this one? Uh, moisture when it came. So it was slightly moist. Uh, and it's it's pretty funny. It dries out, not real quick, but it dries out quicker than some other Navy Flake blends that I've uh, had. Mostly because it's a broken flake. And we've, we've, we actually have two things. Right when I got the tin in, I took some out. Gave it to you, and you put it in a airtight jar. Right. And I just kept the tin that it originally came in with me, and I tried it as I smoked throughout my days and everything, and that's what I was smoking it out of. It retained every bit of the moisture it had inside of the jar, the airtight jar, than it did the tin, and it dried out relatively quick. Now, having said that, it is easier to smoke to me out of the tin once it dries out. A oh, absolutely! Bit. I've I think had to relight needs... yeah. several times with this one. Yeah, and I fully rubbed it out mm -hmm. and let it dry just a little bit, maybe about five minutes mm -hmm. or so. Um, but uh, um, yeah, it's it's definitely a little moist and it needs some dry time. Um, but what I liked about keeping it in the mason jar was that man that that tin note just was and that's that was the difference i think the mason jar retained more of those deeper flavors yeah as this one has kind of aired out and had its time to dry to come to a an easier smoke i'm not going to say a better smoke but an easier smoke when it comes to manageability yeah um it lost some of its flavor and i was enjoying it it was still good but it made me remember, oh, that's what it was when it first came to me. Yeah. Um, I, going back to the flavor profile, now that I'm about, oh, about halfway through it, mm -hmm. the rum flavors have, have kind of dissipated. More of the sweetness of the Virginias have come through. Mm -hmm. And a little more of the pepper from the Perique has yeah. come through yeah. a little bit as well. 
So it's kind of morphed. It's kind of changed a little bit. It, yeah. It, it's concentrated more. That's yeah. It seems to it, it it does change as it gradually goes down yeah. to the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. Cool. Well, this comes in uh, two ounce tins, mm -hmm. and like I said, you can get it just about anywhere that sells uh, JL piece. GL. GL piece. Yeah. Uh, GL piece stuff, and it comes out to be about five dollars and eighty five cents an ounce. I checked on smoking pipes earlier today, and they still have. Uh, you know, you can never tell how many. But yeah. They still had some. They, you so, can buy some. Yeah. So you know, it's still available. That's good. Uh, um. I, I don't get any bite out of this. I don't get any harshness out of this. Mm -mm. Uh, it burns fairly cool, considering how wet it was. It burns fairly cool and clean. Uh, it's a little slow burning. To me, this would be one that you purchase, you let age. Because it has that rum in it, because it has some of those unsweetened, toasted black Cavendish flavors. Man, I can't imagine what the flavor is going to mature as when those flavors start to mellow out yeah. and they start to become more condensed. I wish it was in a cake form so it could mellow out a little bit more and they could combine more richly the flavors. But I think this is one that I'm really interested in trying as I an aged I wonder tobacco. how this would do, you know, because last week I did that episode pressing, yeah. on the pressing. I wonder if we were to rub all of this out and then press it in a cake. And then press it in a cake after Ooh. that. I wonder how that would how that would go. Good experiment for someone out there, maybe, maybe even us. I don't yeah. know, but I don't know if it'll last because we still have another week to press what I've got in there right now. Yeah. So by then, this will probably all be gone. By yeah, because Colton so, and Ian are going to want to yeah, try it. Yeah, but I think this is definitely something a Perique lover would enjoy because the Perique is prominent. It's prominent in it, yeah. but it's not overpowering. It's 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 some of the other vapor blends that I've tried have very, very prominent Perique things, especially from CND. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know this is a GLP blend, but made by CND, some of their other vapor blends are very, very, very strong. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily call this a vapor blend, but I'm almost not tempted to call it a navy blend either because of the Cavendish and the way... Well, it's definitely, it's categorized as a vapor. Yeah. So oh. It is categorized as a vapor but I think just with the navy topic, with I mean with rum topic, it kind of falls into that navy. Well, in the name kind of, wind jimmer. Yeah. yeah, and the and the picture on it, uh, the artwork on it is of a big uh, ship. Ship yeah. back in the olden days. Yeah, so it you know it just kind of leads you to believe that that's what it's going to be. This is you know there's a lot of different flavors going on. This is definitely a, a full smoke. Mm -hmm. um, I have a fast cadence, but if I slow down on this one, it, it seems to be a little more manageable, and also it, the the flavors come out better. I, yeah, I bet this will age really well. Really well. I think this would also be a good transition from an arrow to a Virginia, to a, a vapor blend, too, because you get some of those dark fruit flavors. You get some of those nutty flavors from the burley, but the rum adds... Uh, and the Cavendish add a little bit of sweetness to it to blend in to like, hey, here, because it starts off really sweet and kind of arrow style, and then by the time you get to the bottom of the bowl, you get that Virginia Perique cool. flavors. Well, I guess we're down to the... Scoring of it. Yeah. What do you think you want to give it? Vapors are not my favorite. Yep. Um, I like it, though. I'm gonna give it three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty good score for a for a vapor style. Yeah, I'm gonna give it three and a half because I like what the Virginias are doing, and the Periques in this are the type of Perique that I enjoy. Yes, yes, me too, me too, and uh, I couldn't agree with you more on the score. I think I'm gonna give it a three and a half shots as well. So, I'm your your three and a half and my three and a half. So it's a three and a half. Yeah. All right. So for GL piece, Windjammer, which is relatively new on the market, yeah, we give it three and a half shots. Uh, anything else you want to say about this? Uh, it's a really good blend, guys. Uh, I'm. I've tried a couple other blends from GL piece, and I have to say, by far, this is the best one I've tried as a first time try. 
Uh, there, there have been some other ones that I've tried, put down, gone back to, enjoyed better, things like that. Uh, this one is the first one that I've tried that I've been like, you know what, I'm going to have a hard time aging this one unless I buy a bunch. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, not, not, maybe next week, maybe the week after that, we're going to reveal our press. Yeah. Uh, our pressed tobacco. And then we're going to do a sampling, a comparison between the bulk form of it and the pressed form of it that we did so well, that'll be interesting to come through but also reach over there and get that big tin also yeah. here pretty soon we're going to give you our impressions on McBaron's new Latakia rolls uh, I just got this in oh, two days ago and um, some interesting interesting comments about this there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, hype about this going on yeah. out, out in the, out in, in the uh, social media world and um, there's definitely two sides <laughs> of the opinions on on that and we'll we'll talk about that more when we when we get to our uh, impressions on yeah that. okay yeah, absolutely all right well i i enjoyed this and that yeah. the only thing left to do is to have a nice drink and, and to finish out the night yeah finish finish out what we're doing Guys, thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate you. Please make sure that you uh, continue with your comments and continue with your suggestions. Uh, we, we read all of those and we do make note of those so that uh, we can kind of build our uh, future episodes uh, for things that uh, we definitely want to make sure that we're doing things that you are interested in. So keep those coming. Thanks again. And don't forget, make all your piping moments count. We'll see you next time. Enjoy your week. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, guys.